Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. Work programs are underway in Finland and Canada. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol ADD, on Frankfurt symbol 82A1, and the OTCQB symbol ASDZF. Please visit our website arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is home ownership consultant Ross Kay from the wealthy homeowner.ca. Welcome back to the show, Ross. Hey, thanks for having me back, Jim. Ross, one of our listeners wants to know what would be a wiser choice for their family? Buy a home in Abbotsford, which is down the Fraser Valley from Vancouver, or in the city of Vancouver itself. What would you tell them? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume, Jim, that they, they probably have some kind of a price point that they're, they're working from. And that price point is probably going to dictate what, uh, what type of homes that they're looking at. Um, clearly, you're probably looking at a different uh, quality of property in Abbotsford. You're getting way more for your money in Abbotsford than you would be in in Vancouver, but uh, I also have to look at it with 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 how we approach uh, the home ownership question, which is we always simply look at uh, dollars. How much? What if you're going to spend six hundred thousand dollars on a house? You're going to spend that six hundred thousand dollars in Abbotsford, or you're going to spend that six hundred thousand dollars in Vancouver? You're still going to spend six hundred thousand dollars when we come onto the show. A lot of the time, the the frustration that we have with the way the real estate re, organized real estate re, releases their stats is they're basically, as, as we said in the show, they're just just quoting uh, what the buyers are doing. They're not they, what they're saying has nothing to do with the houses, and that's kind of a little bit about this question you just asked me, and uh, and this question actually it, it it comes up regularly for us virtually every single person who's involved with the buyer program or anybody who's getting consulting from us uh, about housing markets we we have to take uh take in the the understanding behind the intelligence that's used to answer this question so i'll give you a little a little snippet here jim uh of how we would begin to answer the question for for these these people if you choose to purchase a $600,000 house in Abbotsford versus Vancouver, we are going to tell you that over the next 25 years, choosing Abbotsford is going to cut out $142,000 of your net wealth. So assuming you purchase a $600,000 house in both places, whether it's a condo in Vancouver and a Small detached in uh, Abbotsford, whatever whatever the situation is. Regardless, regardless of the change in value those two properties would experience. So we're just going to say those two properties move in in value, make it the same amount of value change over twenty five years. Uh, uh, twenty five years by choosing Vancouver over Abbotsford, you're going to have an extra hundred and forty two thousand dollars in your retirement savings simply by choosing Vancouver over Abbotsford. And everybody's going to say, what is this guy talking about? Well, there is a difference between the cost of a house and the expense of a house. There is a difference between your principal and your interest payments. There is a difference in your carrying charges each month. Let's say that the two properties were identical in terms of what they were going to need in repairs. So let's say the house, the, the two places, one in Vancouver and in one in Abbotsford, were going to require the exact same monthly expense to keep them up to date over those 25 years. So that's not a fact. We're still sitting at $142,000 more in Vancouver. And I know that your listeners are wondering, what is this guy talking about? So what we would tell you is this. If you buy a $600,000 house in Vancouver, your property taxes are going to be around $1,500 a month. 
a year, excuse me. In Abbotsford, they're going to be $3,500 a year. You are going to spend an extra $2,000 per year in property tax expense by choosing to spend by a $600,000 home in Abbotsford. If instead of giving the government that $2,000, you simply invested it, and you invested it in with a financial advisor somewhere, someone that you could trust, you buy an ETF, something of that nature, or as interest rates rise, you buy GICs. But if you just get a simple 6% annual return, which is basically what every financial advisor in Canada will tell you they can average you for over 25 years, you're going to be $142,000 richer by buying the Vancouver home versus the Abbotsford home. Ross, you're do, never going to- Ross do you take into account things so, like maybe you would know, but Abbotsford is out of the greater Vancouver uh, regional district which charges a 17.5% or cent per liter gasoline tax for transit. In Abbotsford, you don't have to pay that extra 17 plus cents a liter for transit tax. Would that make a difference? Or because you live out in Abbotsford and have to drive into Vancouver, even with a cheaper gas, you're still paying more? Well, you would sit down and you would cal- make those calculations out. I mean, what you're addressing was that survey that was released uh, last week, where they they made they talked about compu- uh, commuters. Yes, Their, CMHC was commenting about how people living out in the suburbs of the GTA, there's no savings versus in, living in Toronto. And we sit here and we're laughing at CMHC. They're like it's stupidity what they're making their comments. If you're not spending money on your home and instead you are investing that money. Then your, your, your net wealth 25 years from now is going to be substantially higher. The, the commuter charges that they were talking about, they didn't take into consideration the taxation difference between it living in Toronto and living in my hometown of Burlington. There is a massive difference if you own an $800,000 house in Toronto versus an $800,000 house in Burlington. Toronto, your tax, your property taxes are way lower. So without understanding that this is how your net wealth is impacted, you don't understand the sheer magnitude of what the decision that you're making in terms of where you're going to buy and what house you're going to buy. Ross, I can tell you. Yeah, and I, I can tell say you too, Ross, uh, another factor maybe people aren't putting it. What is your personal time worth? If you're spending two and a half hours a day on the highway, versus a 20 minute commute if you live you know near your job what is your personal time worth and, or are you or do you have a job where you can work on that commute you know I often wonder if for commuters like for Burlington but I, I can't believe that someone has to set up a bus service to drive executives into Toronto daily and in that bus you have full internet access with your computer so you could work for the hour I know on the on the transit system, that's exactly what happens. A lot of the people going in are working on on their commute. But if you're in a job where you can't work on your commute, then yeah, I mean that's just eating into your life. So you've got to look at all of these things. When people are talking about houses, home ownership, your house is going to consume the greatest amount of your earnings other than taxes every single year. There is nothing else out there that will consume your earnings, uh, the amount of your earnings, other than taxes, than the roof you're going to put over your home. When you understand the the sheer the sheer again, I'm going to use that word magnitude of of the amount of money that we're talking about here, it's very easy to save a hun- tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars simply by making the right choice. I just gave you one for property taxes where it's $142,000. Now, imagine a house. If you select the right property, let's for the sake of the argument, Jim, you pick a brand new home. Okay, over the next 25 years, you are going to have very minimal uh, maintenance, renovations, and upgrades that are going to need to be done in that house. 
around 20 years, you're going to have to start start uh, having things done. If you buy a home that's already uh, 20 years old, you're going to have to start spending money right away. So that's another consideration. What 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 your listeners can take away from this is this: real estate agents, brokers, sales reps, the banks. They're not going to talk to you about the expense of your home. They are not going to talk to you about if we spend a dollar on property tax, that's one less dollar you have less to invest. They're not going to say that, look, if you buy on this side of the street, there are streets, Jim, there are streets in Canada where if you buy on one side of the street, one side of the street, you bought, if the identical home was available on both sides of the street, the house is exactly the same value. It goes up in value exactly the same over the next 25 years. Depending on what side of the street you bought in, you're, you could be worth over $300,000 more. Just by the, being on one side of the street or the other. Now, when you start multiplying that by saying, well, wait a, se- wait a second, okay, if that's it, R- Ross comes on the show and he talks about quality, the quality of homes all the time. Okay, well, if you buy the 10th best house on the street or you versus in April of 2016 in Vancouver when you were buying the 40th best house in the street, do you not think the person who bought gets the 10th best house is going to have to spend way, way less in that home, renovating it, repairing it, and, and maintaining it? Of course they're going to spend way less. So that's money that they could invest. The difference in the quality of a home that you're buying is very, very important to your overall retirement wealth. Real estate agents won't talk about it. Banks won't talk about it. Mortgage brokers won't talk about it. Why won't they talk about it? Because those are things that are going to impact your decision not to buy a specific home, but instead to search one that's better suited to you. Isn't that why you get a home inspector to say, this is uh, what needs to be repaired. This is necessary. This is necessary. And here's my estimate on how much all that's going to cost. Isn't that right. part now, of the home buying process? Well, I mean, that's right. what now, I did. That is, that is a different level of inspection, though, Jim. Right? Normally, they go through and they say, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, this is this needs to be done. Yeah, this this this, uh, this looks normal. Yeah. The, the, home, the home inspectors, generally speaking, don't want to get the real estate agents upset with them. So they give very, very um, generous home inspections. Uh, in if Mike Holmes is around, if you can get a Mike Holmes inspection, the real estate agents hate him because he comes in and he hammers <laughs> out. If it needs a new roof, he says, "Look, the roof is going to need to be repaired in three years." He'll tell you that. He won't say, "Oh, this is normal. This is average for the neighborhood." Well, of course, if I'm in a 25 year old neighborhood. Average for the neighborhood probably is a 12 to 13 year old roof. It's going to need to be replaced in the next five to seven years at best. So the type of home inspection people should be getting done is far, far more complex than what, than what they're having prepared for them on the advice of a real estate agent. We have, when we're doing building inspection, so when our members are going to go and get a building inspection done, uh, a home inspection done, it is far more complicated, and the home inspector has to answer questions. The reason why the home inspector has to answer the questions is we want to know if the roof is 8 years old or whether it's 14 years old because we have to assign a value to that roof because we know the, the, the homeowner owning that house, the roof is now going to cost six $7,000 to replace. If, you're, if your roof is already halfway through its life cycle, it's only worth thirty five hundred bucks. If it was installed last year, it's worth seven. Don't tell me that a house with a two year old roof and a house with a set twelve year old roof roof are worth the same because the real estate agents say they are. Look at the property tax scenario. Go out and try to find in writing somewhere, anywhere in the world, where they tell home buyers by choosing a certain location, you are going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars richer, 25, 30, 
40 years from now. You won't find it. We'll have more with Ross K. right after the break. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Vatic Ventures Corp. is a potash exploration company focused on the Korat Basin in Thailand, the world's largest undeveloped potash resource. Vatic's management has extensive potash exploration and development experience in Thailand. Vatic will have marketing advantage compared to Western producers. Drill program commences this spring. Vatic trades on the TSX Venture, symbol VCV, and on Frankfurt, symbol V8V2. Visit our website, vaticventures.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, sales to new listing ratios are being quoted all over the place again lately as a way of measuring demand in the housing market. Is that how you measure demand or do you use something else? Okay, so we do not use, I, which I have mentioned on the show, Jim, uh, and please keep up the interactive part. I, I, that, I think that's better for the listeners when they're hearing, when they they have you jumping in instead of letting me talk all the time. Um Sales to new listings ratio is a uh, correlating measure. The reason why CMHC, the banks, every economist in, in the world uh, does not have data that supports a balanced market being read from the sales to new listings ratio. Now, I hope your listeners list, understand. There is not a single report anywhere in the world that says sales to new listings ratios measures a balanced market. CMHC has told me they do not have such material. They rely upon the Canadian Real Estate Association's claims of what a balanced market is, which is between 40 and 60%. Well, what the Canadian Real Estate Association doesn't say, Jim, is that 95% of the time, you're always going to get a reading of 40 to 60%. You're always going to have a reading that the Canadian Real Estate Association is going to say it's a balanced market. Whether you're paying 10%, house, house prices are going up 10% a year, or housing prices are dropping 5% a year, it's still going to come up as a balanced market. The reason why is because of how people buy and sell houses. Sales to new listings. Traditionally, People list their home for sale, and then they sell it, and they buy their second house. That's how they do it. Initially, in in the early in the early early period of a of a, a trading uh, a trading phase, people will go as much as six months. So they'll sell their house with a six month closing date. That gives them three to four months to go out and find another house and still close on it with that six month closing date. That's one of the reasons why you need to be measuring where the buyers are in the market. So you said, just ask me about demand. So our answer is no, we would never use sales to new listings ratio. We don't use sales to active listings ratio because they are correlating measures of a housing market. They have nothing to do with the market itself. Like they have nothing to do with terms of explaining to you what's going on in the market. We use what's called days of demand. Days of demand, for us, basically measures the number of people, families, who have already sold their existing home and they haven't purchased their next home yet. This is a really, really primary measurement of any housing market. And if you know how to calculate it, you always know where the market's going to be headed. So in uh, May of 2016, at the national level, the entire Canadian housing market, coast to coast, we measured that the, the number of buyers who had already sold their house, their existing home, and hadn't purchased their next one was around 51,000. There was 51,000 families in uh, May of 2016 who had already sold their existing home but hadn't purchased their next one. Now, I'll tell your listeners, 51,000 is very few families. 
That is very, very, very few families. You have to understand, those people still have three to four months to find a home. So with three to four months to find a home and they're down to only 51,000 families, that is not very many, that is not very many families. I'll also tell your listeners, in May of 2018, two years later, there were 110,000 families who had already sold their existing home and hadn't bought another one. That's how you measure demand. Demand is measured by someone who has already sold their home, meaning they have the ability to go out and buy another home regard not that is no longer dependent on the sale. They've already made their sale. They've already sold their house. They haven't moved out of it. They sold it to somebody else, and now they're going out to buy a house. When you measure that metric, okay, so you're measuring that the buyers, how many buyers are, we call them ready, willing, and able buyers. How many buyers are out there that are ready, they're willing, and they're able? So they're ready. They've been checking the housing market out. They're willing. They they really want to move. They're not lookers. They are movers. And they're able. They've already sold their existing home. All they have to do is find a new one. When you're tracking those buyers, you know what's going to happen with the housing market. You know what's going to happen with prices. Are prices going to increase or are they going to decrease? Are prices going to increase quicker or decrease quicker? Is the total sales volume in a uh, in a trading uh, area going to increase or is it going to decrease? How many months before it starts to decrease? And then how many more months on top of that before prices start to fall? You can't met you can't do that with sales to new listings ratio Jim. You can't do that with sales to active listings ratio Jim. Because they're trying to measure What's on Realtor.ca? We don't care what's on Realtor.ca, and we don't care what people what the sales happened last month. We care about how many buyers are actively out in the market today who can purchase a home. Because when those people are bought have purchased a home, it's set either it's going to set out set off a series of other sales, or if they're buying at the end. In other words, they're buying the most expensive home. You're going to see more more, more expensive homes sell in that month, which creates a higher average selling price, which means the market is dead. The market is over. You can also use days of demand to track uh, how many days between some, between when someone sells their house and they their first their current home and they purchase their next home, trade-up buyers. You can calculate that. And by monitoring that, you can measure risk in a market. Because what happens, Jim, is, it's, and it's happening, it happened in Calgary in 2014, it happened in Vancouver in 2016, and it happened in Toronto in 2017. People were going out and purchasing their next home before their, first, their old home was sold. That's what we call an oversold market. When a market is oversold, it is extremely risky. It is it is a, a, the risk that causes a housing bubble to pop. We measure that. This is a mathematical calculation that has been consistently measuring the housing market for 40 years. But you're not going to see that in print because it doesn't help the sale of homes. It doesn't help commissions being earned. If we look at days in demand, Jim, and we say, well, look at the de- days in demand right now, or the number of buyers that we see in the marketplace it has dropped from uh, 100 110,000 down to 50. We know that people are trade, the people are buying their next home before their current home is sold. Really, really dangerous. We also that we know that that is not sustainable. It is a market fundamental that that is not sustainable, okay? That is going to cause a housing market to crash. We're monitoring that. We know that that's how that works. When we look at right now, Jim, we're looking at uh, this this year, the peak 
amount of buyer, buyers in the, on the sideline. People who had sold their house and they hadn't purchased their next one. It peaked at 111,000 families. So there was, across Canada, at one time this year, there were 111,000 families who had sold their existing home and hadn't yet bought their next home. We have to go all the way back into, um, we're, we're way back into March of 2009, Jim, before that was recorded again. That, we have to go all the way back to March of 2009. And what was happening in March of 2009? That was when the American housing market had collapsed and the Great Recession was ongoing. So when we're, if you're not measuring a housing market, measuring what the buyers are doing, all you're doing is guessing. You don't think you can time the market because you can't. You're looking at listings. When you're looking at the buyers, you know exactly what's going to happen today, tomorrow, and two years from now. Because it takes that long for the, for the, the decisions those buyers are making today to end in the market. It's why we have such a huge lead time. We don't use sales to new listings ratio. There is no academic peer-reviewed document available anywhere in the world that supports the use of that metric because it, it, it can't. It, it, you can't make one up. Days in demand, you also are not going to find out. Ready, willing, and able buyer counts, you're not going to find. Yet we use them every single day. Why? We'll have more with Ross K. right after this. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp is a Canadian-based mineral exploration project generator. The company currently holds multiple property interests in Ontario with joint venture partners and is seeking further joint venture partners for other drill-ready properties in our portfolio. For more information, please visit our website at rmroyalty.com or call me at 604-922-2030. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross K. Ross, uh, the association that looks after bankruptcy trustees and so on, says it takes about two years before rising interest rates result in a in a big crush or a noticeable wave of bankruptcies. Right now, the Bank of Canada says, we're not worried with our rising interest rates. We're not seeing any bankruptcies. Is this willful blindness because we know the pattern and they're just going to do what they're going to do regardless of the economic results? I, I, I honestly believe, Jim, it's ignorance. And, and, I, and I honestly believe after the last uh, five years of uh, fighting against the fact that it was not a conspiracy theory. I mean, when you look at a housing market the way we look at it, Jim, and it's the simplicity with how we measure it, and then and then we hear the commentary that we hear, which just doesn't make any sense to us. You have you have to believe this. People really cannot like these economists, the bank economists. They really can't be this um, ignorant. But, but I, we have come to accept that that is the truth. Because of 40 years of organized real estate, control over real estate data, the structure of the home trading, the home trading infrastructure, which is centered around getting the highest price possible in the shortest period of time and earning commissions. We really do believe that there's ignorance out there. When we come on the show and we say back in 20, the fall of 2016, the Vancouver housing market has already recorded a 26% drop in your average selling price. And then in the summer of 2018, two years later, all of a sudden other people are starting to report single detached homes are off at 25%. Their information is two years old. That is the information we were reading two years ago. So when you hear the comment about this, the bankruptcies, Sure. I would, I would guarantee you that we can read two years ahead when the bankruptcies are going to start to be recorded. Or where, 
and what comes first, we also know will be delinquencies. And we also know that you have to track delinquencies against uh, where, where the mortgages are being placed. So, yeah, I really do believe you, you can, are going to, you know, two years in advance. I know we know what the housing market is going to be two years in advance. I, I know where it's going to be. We know two years in advance that we have a whole year to double check everything what we're, what we're, what we're recording and still be a year ahead of what gets reported in, in uh, monthly home, home sale data. There is such a massive amount of room. I think what, what, what the, what the ignorance is, Jim, is that everybody looks at everything as if it's a stock market. You know, the stock market, you can buy and sell stocks in a day. The, the stock market really can collapse in a day as it did back in, uh, you know, Black, Black October, uh, years ago. You, you, the, how, the, the stock market really can lose 20, 30% of its, its, its value in a day. A housing market can't. It's impossible. You can't roll over enough. You can't make enough home trades to drop prices that quickly. You can't make those the home trades quick enough to get prices to increase that quickly. You can have the illusion of house price change, Jim, but that doesn't mean it really happened. The 26% uh, uh, drop that we recorded in the fall of uh, 2016, that wasn't for home prices we were, we were measuring. We were measuring what the buyers were going to be able to pay two years later. That's all we were measuring. And if buyers can pay $200,000 less, can only pay $200,000 less, the average selling price is going to be $200,000 less. And that's the perspective that we bring to it. So I think, Jim, that the answer, and, and this is really hard to fathom, but you really do have to accept they're simply ignorant to way, the way the housing market works and they're ignorant to how homeowners interact with their, their, their mortgages. They really are ignorant to that. It's not, it's not like they're doing it, uh, to be mean. It's not like they're doing it, um, on purpose to make a profit. They simply don't know what they're talking about. And that is an extremely challenging fact to accept. I mean, it, it took me five years to accept CMHC really believed the MLS sales price was recording the average set, the, the average value of a Canadian home. It took me five years before I could believe, believe CMHC believed that. And it took, a, it took a conference call for me to have the chief economist at CMHC talking to me on the phone admitting they really believed it. So I think it's ignorance, Jim. I don't think it's anything else. Ross, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks for having me on. My guest has been home ownership consultant Ross K from the wealthyhomeowner.ca. If you have any questions for Ross, and we do get a lot, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.